Sorry. Welcome, welcome to Teachers, Students, and Teachers. Um, it is the 11th of um, June. My father's 84 today. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So um, he's having had some uh, illnesses too. So I'm really happy for him. Anyway, that's June 11th um, for me. Um, welcome um, to Teachers, Students, and Teachers. We are going to talk about the youth voices. Um, I uh, subtitled it, one of my favorite books from the past by Jim Britton, deep past, I gotta say, uh, which is, uh, uh, his, his subtitle was uh, Prospect and Retros Retrospect. Um, but anyway, so we're going to kind of reflect on our year together um, and think about the future together a little bit and maybe do some planning. Um, so uh, the, the other way I've announced this show is that... Uh, to, to invite anybody, and you can jump right in here. This is an open staff meeting, so we're like uh, youth voices teachers, and um, Aaron uh, has been, we've been talking about connecting with uh, Guru, and you, so we invited Aaron and, <laughs> sorry, your first name, uh, Drew, yeah. with <laughs> this. All right, I'll get it here. With this as well, um, and, you know, you guys just jump in whenever you think it makes sense. Um, I'm I'm kind of excited. We're we're trying to set up a library partner page with them, uh, you, with Youth Voices, and and I said, you know, I think you guys are doing work in um, in Oakland too, aren't you? And they and I mentioned you, Joe, and they said, oh yeah. They, so we could see what kind of real connections we can make here. Too. Fair enough. Um, so let's um, go around and, and say hello to each other. Chris, why don't you start off? Introduce yourself and say what's on your mind a little bit. Sure. Um, my name is Chris Sloan, and I teach English and media at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, which is a high school there. Um, and we just finished last Friday, so I'm in the retrospective part of things. And um, you know, and I, I'm interested in talking to, uh, well, everybody here, but um, during the year. Uh, particularly Joe and I connected, uh, you know, for one extended period, and then Don and I, I think our students started to connect at the end of the year. So I'm interested in how we can, you know, maybe coordinate that so that um, our connections are richer next year. And just to say, Chris has been uh, with Youth Voices from the get-go, so um, we weren't as gray as we are now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, Don. Do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Good. Dawn Reed. I'm from Michigan. I teach at Okemos High School, and I have all English classes from ninth grade through seniors. And I'm excited to be new to Youth Voices. I started this year, and I love it. And I can't believe it's taken me so long to jump on board. Yeah, I mean, you're not new to writing projects, and you know, you're. Old colleague, I gotta say, um, and so right. it's great to have you as well. Yeah, and you've done blogging with kids before, have you not? Yes, yes. So yeah, I've been so. blogging and podcasting and doing digital work with students for a long time. Um, well, my whole teaching career, and mm. I'm I've been excited to connect, especially with Chris and Paul through the writing project, and I'm excited about making more connections with other teachers as well, just like Chris said, about the com different conversations. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of people in the chat room. Um, I, when they can join us, they are welcome to um, as well here. But Drew, go ahead and introduce yourself. You sure. Like. So my name is Drew Remaker, and I'm currently working here at Guru based in Palo Alto, California, although I, I grew up in the Bay Area. And uh, I was a teacher. I taught for four years in the South Bronx and then uh, moved back here to work at Guru where mainly I do teacher professional development and go to schools and introduce them to Guru while also trying to find out their stories and have them share. And it's been a pleasure to work very closely with Joe this past year who's done just a, a variety of things with Guru, both from making her own collections as well as having her students uh, make collections on Guru and uh, just seeing all the very cool, authentic tasks that she has her students do is it's very inspiring. Drew, where did you teach in the Bronx? 
I taught at MS331, which now I believe has been renamed to the Bronx School of Young Leaders. Uh, but back then it was the School of Scientific Inquiry and Investigation. Uh, <laughs> so <nice>. it was, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was on Jerome and Tremont, the intersection of Jerome. Ah, sure. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I'll go last, but hi. Yeah, I'm, go ahead, yeah. <laughs> I'm Erin Adams, uh, and I work here at Guru, been here for a couple years now, and I work on our partnerships team. Uh, so specifically, I manage our content partnerships, so working with content providers of all shapes and sizes to bring their great free and open content into Guru and uh, make sure to share it with uh, teachers and students everywhere. So that's, my, that's my job here. Excited to talk more to Youth Voices, because. Paul's been a big celebrity here since I started, so <laughs> it's about time to get in a more uh, solid space for you guys. Cool. And Joe. Hey. Um. Okay. Joe, and um, I teach in Oakland, and wow, I'm so I'm still coming. I'm decompressing today because last night my kids graduated, so oh, wow. Wow. I just started reflecting like at nine o'clock this morning. So, but um, so these are kids. These are kids you had for at least two years. Is these right? were my loopers. Oh my gosh! I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through withdrawal for a couple of days, I think. Um, but I've spent this week working with my next senior, my next round of seniors. So, it, yeah, it it, just, it it doesn't stop, which is cool. Um, and I'm just I'm really psyched for everything I did this year. Because I'm really excited for, even though I don't, I'm not looping with next year's seniors, or I'm just, I'm just going to have them for one year, man, I think that, that we're really set up to do really great things on a daily basis. Yeah, because so how many, are, are there are other teachers in your school, right, or your building? Yeah. Are there different schools in your building, is that right? We have three, yeah, so our high school, the whole high school is divided into three pathways, um, four small learning communities, so architecture, um, then there's the Law and Justice uh, Academy, the Media Academy, and we also have a really strong Newcomer Academy for all of our uh, recently emigrated kiddos. So trying a lot of things out, especially with that Newcomer Academy, we did a lot more work, digital work with them. We got them on the netbooks first, which was very cool. Um, so we have kids that are, I don't know, exponentially moving very quickly. I'm, ex I'm excited to kind of explore what our kiddos, those, that particular group can do next year. I'm not teaching them directly, but I am working with those teachers. So, right. Fun. Yeah, I mean, if you go to the Fremont page, you guys, I don't know who's done this, but <laughs> you're well organized with, with uh, their graduation dates next to their... Yeah. So it looks, like, it looks like a lot of potential for a lot of kids from Fremont to get involved. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I need to figure that out. Like, how do we organize it in the best possible way now that we have more people coming on? Um, you'll help me out, Paul. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Let's see. All right. So, um, and Tommy Bateau uh, from Colorado is uh, looking like he's trying to come in here at times, which uh, we'll figure out as we go. Um, let's um, sh shall we? Say a, a few words about what went well this year um, and what we want to repeat. Um, because, but we do want to problematize uh, and leave enough time for that. So, and and I'll so, yeah. So let's just do the what went well first, and then we'll get to the problems or the you know what could go better. So what do you think went well? <laughs> Um, I think I think what went well for our school was a lot of our teachers um, being really interested in the civic engagement work. So I got a lot of support um, with Oakland's big push with civic engagement. I felt like I got a lot of support all around me and people watching our classroom just to see how we engaged in that that just all of the civic like this focus now that we have as a district. Um, so it, what went well was I didn't screw up too badly with all the stuff I was trying this year. Um, but I feel like it was good modeling for teachers, like just kind of put yourself out there with the different platforms, Youth Voices, Guru. Um, and I feel like I feel like with the, the teachers that are going to try stuff out, I think, I, I think we did okay. And my students were a good model for like 
how to start engaging in the work in small ways because there's a lot of examples from this past year I think that are like just beyond the blogs and um, all the hangouts that got recorded on Youth Voices uh, there's a lot of things for the teachers now to be able to look at and they like they happened just recently so I think that's what went well because in terms of momentum and just kind of impact on our whole staff um, that's why I'm really excited. Like, I'm, I'm excited for my own classroom next year, but I'm really excited for where the teach the whole staff is going to go. Oh well, a lot of them are going to go now because they have um, they can see things and they can see products, and that's good. So that's what I'm just about. Mm -hmm. Well, what went well for me was um, you know um, there were, ditto to the hangouts thing. My students were pretty uh, charged about that. Um, I had you know one girl who was you know just in love with Bassam, and uh, you know she was like, "Can we hang out with those guys?" <laughs> it, it, was, was she the one that he was in love with as well? Probably, yeah, yeah. So th there was that. That was cute. Um, but you know, there was also just for everyone else. Um, there was um, a lot of um, excitement about just opening up a computer and it being part of the classroom. Only you know, in that computer are these other people who uh, are doing similar things. And so that was pretty uh, engaging for them, pretty motivating for the students. They really liked that. And then, of course, there are always those times on Youth Voices where somebody just gets a lot of conversation around their uh, discussion. And um, that's always really um, energizing to see because the kids get really so excited about um, the chatter that can happen with their words. So, I mean, those are a couple things that, uh, and there are a lot of examples of those things, but those are a couple things that really stand out. And worth saying, I think, is um, that to, to what degree do we want to engineer, coach that to happen more, or is it okay that it's more happenstance, you know? So, are you talking about the hangout? Well, or like, the, no, no, the hangout, I think we can engineer more. I think, the, like, like the, the, your your one student, the one that comes to mind most for me is the student who asked the amazing question about um, does war ever bring peace? Right. Right. Yeah. And all those middle school kids from Wisconsin responded, and then she wrote back to every one of them <laughs> right. in such a thoughtful, amazing way. That's not something we assigned her to do, right? Mm -hmm. or, did or anybody did. So, yeah. So how do we leave room for magical moments like that, but get more of them? <laughs> yeah, and, and just, I'll stop here, but those are the times that really have been really fascinating for me to look at, like at the end of the year, to try to dissect and see what happened, are those times where somebody goes above and beyond what they need to. Um, because, you know, I say, well, you know, you make a post now, you know, do a comment, but every once in a while you'll have these people who do more posts or have more comments and conversations, and it's always interesting to me to, you know, to find the backstory there. So the student you were talking about, her backstory is pretty interesting too. Don, jump in and then we'll hear the backstory maybe. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what the most exciting piece for me was that I joined Youth Voices, but my students were really excited about when their work was featured. So they were very excited about that. They also, similar to what Chris said, they were excited about seeing students do work that was similar to what we were doing. There was a teacher that post about, posted about research and they found it and they said, that sounds just like you. That's what you're saying to us. So that was very exciting. And we that, Was that did from not, Skyline? It might have been. I'm not sure. Yeah, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. it might have been. Um, and, and like Chris, I'm interested in those conversations. We, we didn't comment a lot in terms of responding to other people and I want to be able to do that more next year starting right away and getting students involved in that conversation. Mm -hmm. So what have you thought so far about how to make that happen? If you have. <laughs> uh, I've thought a lot about it. I think mm. the conversations that I craft for students are important. I think that the natural, authentic ways that they happen can be very, very powerful. So I liked how you described them as magical moments. And I think it's 
can be tricky to figure out how to orchestrate that. So I don't, I thought about it, but I don't know that I have great answers yet unless I'm pointing students specifically to other conversations. And that's something that I want to do um, next year. Mm -hmm. So that's a good start. We had a couple things going on. Drew or, or Aaron, do you have any questions or thoughts already to jump in here with us? Or? Yeah, I mean, I can I can speak to the fact that I mean, I joined Guru in October, and I think one of the successes of this year was that I believed in Guru as a concept, and I just hadn't seen it put into practice. And I think this past year, getting an opportunity to you know not only introduce teachers to, to this form of teaching and learning, but actually getting to see it work in in several classrooms uh, gave me a bit of inspiration, and uh, and I think it, it launched something that um, we're going to be expanding rapidly next year, introducing Guru to a lot more school districts and a lot more uh, teachers. So I think for me, one of the big successes was taking something that I thought was a good idea in theory and then actually seeing it play out in, in, real, in real life. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, jump onto that and just say that, I mean, from my perspective, it has been great seeing this year uh, doing a lot more direct work with teachers and districts and kind of uh, getting much more close connection with a larger number of teachers has been really uh, helpful for us, not only from a product perspective, from, but from my particular uh, work where I'm identifying the best content uh, out there, knowing more about teachers' kind of best practices and practices that they're trying out and the kind of work that they're doing, it's helpful for us to identify uh, what we need to do to kind of meet those needs. Mm -hmm. um, we should uh, go ahead and ask Don. <laughs> so a little more definition of guru uh, yes. would be helpful. But maybe maybe um, we could throw that to Joe for a second and just say, oh, Joe, what is guru and uh, how have you used it? Um. Guru feels like when my kids ask me. Um, there you go, yeah. <laughs> so especially because the students created, so at the end of the year we have the students creating the collection. Um, I tell them, I go, you're about to be a teacher. So you have to think of who your audience is that you want to have them learn something. And I told them when they were designing their collections, I was like, pretend you're designing it for ninth graders. And when you come to our school, they, the students know exactly what I mean by the ninth. One, they were ninth graders, but also designing for that particular audience. They're, then they start to keep in mind certain kids that that wig out, you know. The and so what they what I told them was I said, you know, you're going to have to get that kid to be able to go through a collection, keep them interested with resources that make them want to go through your collection, and you have to teach them about something. Like what was and in this case, what they were teaching them about was. Um, their senior research topic. Cool. And I told them, it's kind of like Amish Friendship Bread, I told them it was like a starter. You know, you're going to have a starter and these kids are going to build on it next year. Wait, Amish and Friendship have, Bread? Wait a I'll second. Start, that's a whole other story. We'll go into that one later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Basically, you need a starter and you give it to all your friends and then mm -hmm. the stuff ferments and then we all make bread and it keeps on going until it multiplies. My mom did it. It was exponential. We had loaves of Friendship Bread in our house for days. I mean, it was ridiculous. Hey, Guru, you have a, you have a new uh, motto. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Go ahead. So I, I, I would tell them, I said, you know, you're, you're, I want you to put in five of your best resources from your senior project. So this was stuff that they had already vetted, that they had used. Um, they were definitely multimedia because that's what got them interest, or that's what kind of held their interest while they were doing their research were a lot more of the, rather than just the print resources, were more of the, like, multimedia resources. So I had them, I said, you know, go, you're going to have someone go through this collection, they're going to go through all your resources, and you want to ask them questions along the way to do a few things. You want to gauge their understanding, because that's data you're going to get back. And then you also want to kind of give them open-ended questions so that they can, you know, kind of explore. So I threw all of that out them, and I gave them five days. And I said, now I'm going to go make magic happen. You've seen the collections that I've created. You see what the potential is. Now go make one based on your topic. So they did, and so what I can say is 
It's like having a playlist of really cool, cool resources around as broad as or as narrow as a topic as you want. And it's providing a way of we accessing lost your web cool resources. Okay. Yeah, ahead. cool yeah. resources. All your, like, yeah, the coolest resources. Because I kept telling them ninth grade attention span. Ninth grade attention span. <laughs> um, and so that's what they did. And so it's kind of like being a teacher in the sense that I'll take my best stuff and I'm going to put it in some, if I know that other teachers might be using this in their classroom, um, I'll use only my best resources, like the stuff I actually had a lot of success with. And then I'll do it in a way that, uh, I'll line up the collection in a way that kind of takes them from warm-up to the end of the, the, the lesson or the unit or however big we went. So, yeah, that's how we use it. I mean... The student collection thing was was awesome because I because having to explain it to my students to have them figure out how to do it themselves was eye opening because I really had to figure out why I used it. Really, I really so like that, that they, like, had, they already they already had resources that they cared about and like you said had vetted. Yeah, but they they had a head start. Um, in the process. Well, they well, needed that where part. Can we s go for it. Go ahead. What? No, go ahead, Paul. No, what were you saying? Um, okay, sorry. I, I was going to ask, where can we see these? Um, I well, let's see. I I shared my all. All of the kids had to share their collections. That they had to collaborate with Drew or ha add him as a collaborator and myself. Um, I could send you links mm -hmm. in the group chat or screen share, screencast. Which is which is getting me to the point of where we are. I have been talking with Aaron and others there at Guru, is to try to set up a Youth Voices, is it called library page? Yes. So that, so that does it make sense that then Joe's students could have put those collections onto that page somehow? Sure. Or how would that have worked? Yeah. yeah, so basically, as it's working right now, the library is connected to one account. But with the new collaborator uh, feature that's back, uh, you can really collaborate with up to 20 people to create each collection. So basically what it will be is one central location for all of the collections that you want to showcase. So you've got a kind of top banner to feature who you are, you've got a title, and then you've got a page that's really yours with a couple of different levels of folders to structure your content, whether it's by topic or class or audience, however however you want to do it, it's, it's your page um, and it's for you to feature as much or as little content as you like. And just to clarify for, for John who's new to the idea of Guru, um, as Joe was mentioning, a collection is like an assemblage of resources whether it be uh, YouTube videos or even uh, youth voices conversations that can be stored and then you can even add questions as well to get your audience member to think about a given topic. And you can even upload additional articles with you know, research to back the, the ideas or topics you're discussing. So it can really take in a variety of forms. Uh, but I'm imagining Youth Voices is going to be one that is probably more student uh, generated uh, you know, as opposed to a lot of teacher generated playlists. I, w I would agree with that, but I also would love, to, I mean, I also love to take a student's example and say, you know, here's here's a little bit harder, but more, you know, also interesting article you might add to your collection, and oh, just be able to add that in. Yeah. Good. Somebody's going to say something? Sorry. Um, so, where, and, and where I think Chris and, and Joe uh, and Don too, um, where I, and hi, hi Tommy, do you want to say hi, hello before we, are you able to talk yet? Looked like you had some kids there. Yeah, I think, I think it's all working okay now. <laughs> I had some problems with my feed earlier, but it seems to be going good. So, well, introduce yourself if you would. And, uh, my and name ask, is Tommy. Ask Buto. your first question. Go ahead, yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Tommy Buteau, and I uh, live in Fort Collins, Colorado, and I've had students on Youth Voices for you know, two or three years now, and uh, really enjoy the platform, and uh, I just have been right now looking at the Guru site. I've never uh, used that before, so I'm interested to find out more about that and uh, how that works. And, and on Youth Voices, I've 
taken, I think, most all of the collections that I've built with students um, at different times, but sometimes with other teachers and so forth, um, at, at youthvoices.net slash guru, and it's G-O-O-R-U. So there's, that's one way to see it. But I'm interested in the library because of getting access to each other's, and um, we've already had some great experiences and learning over the last couple of years of um, while kids are doing research to be publishing right away, early and often. Um, you know, so I, I, the first thing I read, I'm going to you know, talk about that item already, and that gets posted on Youth Voices. But, I'm, I'm, but I've often, and it hasn't happened yet, I've often been interested to see if kids could start reading the same articles. I don't think it's happened much yet, has it? Um, and doing that kind of collaboration, too. Mm -hmm. No, I think I think you're absolutely right. I think it's served mainly the purpose of res uh, teachers sharing resources with each other, rather than a student-based community. And that's something we we're really looking to expand in terms of our, our efforts next year. Is how do we make our how do we make Guru more of a student-facing product and allow them to both generate collections and resources as well as uh, you know collaborate and learn from each other. So I don't want to spend all our time on Guru, and um, we could spend more, I'm sure, but and it's fine. But uh, Don, do you, it's, is it somewhat clear what this thing is yet, or Chris, you were yes, yes, too, the description or? helped a lot. Okay. So I so I wanted to pose it this way, like what? How could Youth Voices and actually Guru too, they're both asynchronous platforms, right? You put stuff up on Monday and people respond to it on Thursday, but then by the next Monday it's buried and we can't find it or you know, access to it is fine. So, so how, do we, how do we keep the asynchronous power but also be more synchronous, like so that we can see each other's work more often. And some of the thoughts we've had are, um, you know, that we've been messing around with over the past month or so is, could we be a uh, like, could there be a YV MOOC where people are proposing ideas? Could there be an assess? A, I said the wrong word there. A um, an assignment bank, um, and we've talked about assignment banks and. If you look at youthvoices.net slash, I think it's slash missions, um, or at least there's a tab for missions, there are a lot of missions there, and students can create their own missions. Um, so how can we, yeah, so, and Chris, you and Joe do the same thing. You guys organize your curriculum on a blog, right? Mm -hmm. And and we did figure out how to put your blogs at the bottom of your school pages. I'm saying a lot here fast. Sorry, guys. Interrupt mm -hmm. me, please. But but so I guess I'm trying to ask how can yeah how can we be working on the same assignments at the same time if that's a good goal? <laughs> well, I think it helps to know kind of the big picture of what people are doing through in the year. So like for instance, I'll usually start with having kids do an inquiry, um, a series of just like you know find do some reading in current events or in the news and create a discussion on the most interesting thing you found or you know that kind of thing so usually for the first month or so they're just doing at least a weekly discussion and then some comments on others uh, as to their inquiry so I think like other people knowing that that's what my kids are up to that that seems like a good thing to know and then like this year you know we did uh, finally I had them narrow down um, their inquiry and do you know a, a research paper uh, among other things on just one question and so again that's where I think Joe and I intersected quite a bit because her kids it seemed like were doing some of my kids were doing some similar things than hers and so I think like now that I know I, I have a better sense of her workflow I think that helps is just like the the big arc of the year like what are things what are the big things you do in you know the fall um, helps me I I think it helps but I don't think it's enough I gotta say. no it's not enough but it, it's just <laughs> yeah. because like yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, 
just continue because sometimes it's a little lonely in in August uh, in September. Yeah, when do you me. actually start? That's worth saying. Yeah, we start August like it's like August twentieth or something. It's it's really early. So my uh, workflow kind of begets some problems. You know, you talked about what we did well, and then um, you know what could go better. Well, you know, if I have these people doing these inquiry questions, you know, all is well there, but there's not a lot of conversation from other schools about it because I think other people are doing different things in the beginning of the year, or maybe not even starting. I think, um, like Paul, I don't think your people are in school until after yeah, it's uh, about Labor Day. By the time Day. we actually get kids on computers, yeah, it's after Labor Day. Right. So, you know, now that I kind of know that, and I suppose it's true with Dawn's students. I don't know about Joe's. I think Michigan students come after Labor Day, too. Yep. Um, you know, so we're already three weeks into it, uh, and so I could probably taper back on um, my initial thing and wait for others to be on the site at the same time, and that would help with just, um, you know, it's, it's not as interesting if you put all these discussions and um, you don't get a lot of conversation about it. So that's a start, is what I'm saying, Paul. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I'm just wondering if we can do more too, or if if that would feel like an imposition on people to say, you know, in this month, let's try to do these three things together. Yeah. I think it could be done. Yeah. It's interesting, Paul. It, we're literally having the same conversation today around. I mean, what, whereas you guys are teaching students, my goal is to try to help teachers learn how to use Guru, which is kind of has a lot of uh, elements to it to learn. And so the idea is if we want to give people the flexibility of pace, of learning things at their own pace, but at the same time trying to get people to have uh, relevant conversations on, say, a weekly or, bi or every other week basis, what is the right balance between giving people the freedom to actually do the work Me. versus come yeah. together and have conversations? I think that's, that's kind of the challenge you're, you're addressing and it's something we're trying to figure out as well. Do you and what sort of expectations can you have for people for it to to be accountable and participate in something for an extended period? Is like you know, do you create a move for four weeks or do you say you know participate once, you know, and then hopefully we'll see you again at some later you know point. That's a, that's a good point, I, and and I was totally convinced by Dave Cormier that. Um, Trying to do a MOOC for a whole year kind of thing and is crazy, but could we do a MOOC for a um, you know a MOOC-like structure for a certain amount of time, right. let's say ten weeks, and, and everyone could agree to that or six weeks or something. Right. Um, and but and and part of and again part of what could be exciting about that is for students to start making assignments for each other too, right? Um, and and ideas for each other, instead of it just all coming from the teachers. Um, um, but well, that's why we need to reorganize. Go ahead, Chris, what? Well, that's what Peggy was asking in the chat room. She said, what kind of student collaboration are you thinking of that's interacting with the content beyond curating and collecting? So, I mean, so far with Guru, we've just talked about, and this is where, you know, full disclosure, I've had my students try to use Guru before, but I don't think I really did it well. Uh, and so, like, you know, you can get the, you can collect stuff, but then it's like, well, what are you doing with the stuff? Right. I think is um, Peggy's uh, question, and I think Joe um, and Paul probably have a better answer than I do. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the Amish friendship bread then. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it is irrelevant. I think it's relevant now at this point, because I... So, like, Friendship Bread, somebody gives you a starter, which is, like, liquid dough. And it, it's fermenting in a bag, and it takes 10 days to make it. And so, day one, you get this bag of goo, goop. You trust them. And then you add stuff every day for, like, the first five days. You add the, I don't even know what she added, pow flour stuff. Um, and then, you, you know, you... After a certain, like, five days, it turns into something else, and then it just starts to naturally rise. It was like magic, but it was always ten days. And so what she, on the fifth day, because it had fermented so much, you would split off that piece and you would give it to your friends, and then they would start the process, and it would, they would build their own bread. 
And so, like, my mom was pretty cool. Like, she would then, like, if someone gave her, when they gave her the starter, like, she couldn't stop herself. She was kind of, like, obsessive about it. And she would add all kinds of flavors, like cranberries and walnuts and all, just things to it, to, to just give it some, some sass, for, on, but it was her own stuff. So I feel like that's kind of like a way to talk about how, like, my students' collections, I said, you're going to have a kiddo that's going to, next year, that's going to have the same, a similar bent on their topic. Like, um, Denora, I put it in our little group chat, Denora's one on military deployment. There will be a kiddo next year that's going to talk about something involving the military. I had another student do one on Tongan cultural values. I can guarantee that I'll, I'll have a student doing research next year about cultural values and how it plays into something else like um, teen pregnancy. And, I, and that's how I feel like it's the bread. It's like, so my students built this starter with this idea that someone was going to take their collection, make a copy of it, for their own, uh, in their own account, and then start adding resources, possibly pulling from other collections that teachers made out there, you know, and just starting. But it's this idea that, um, especially with my students, before they get to me, they haven't had a research paper, which is really problematic in our school, and we're, we're working on it. And so by the time they get to me, we have to kind of, the, the, the research process is so accelerated, they're doing something every day. And, Part of one piece of the process that takes them the most time is trying to figure out which of the resources they're choosing for their research is actually good or useful. I mean, there's so much stuff out there. So if we can hand them a collection that says, okay, so this kid didn't do exactly the same topic you're gonna or you're thinking of doing, but it's it, it's got you know an essence of a direction you could take. They get to they can trust it because it's a student that was in their same situation. Um, but the resources, I'm tell I, I get to tell them, full disclosure, that this is, a, this is a collection a student made at the end of the year when they really did go through all the resources. So that's what I mean by um, students being able to build on, adding their own cranberries to the starter bread or whatever it is they're going to add because they can always add their own resources. So next year, have it, we use Google Drive this year for the students to be able to hold their stuff. But I feel like they can use that, but they can actually put... The, the resources that they're really thinking, hey, I think I have a winner, um, and then start asking the questions about it. Maybe they use a collection as a way of collecting their field research, and then, like, the potential is vast, um, but for me, like, one way that I want the kids, like, to build is by using the collections that we started this year, and, and what's cool is that like we're going to, when we talk about, like, how do we synchronize our years, so we're kind of doing similar, I mean, I, and honestly, for next year, I'm starting really small. I'm really starting at my school site because I want to, I mean, I have, you know, three teachers on Youth Voices right now. I want to build to be more of us blogging and actually talking to each other across grade level. But then with Guru, same thing. We have three or four teachers already using it, and then there's going to be more using it. I want to see how we can even just synchronize some of our, because we all want to do research, and we all are focused on civic engagement. So... And how do we start doing that on our site just to kind of figure out how am I supposed to do that with other schools? Like Chris is awesome. Like that's that was that was like fortunate. So That's a that that's a really good point. And and um, because because synchronizing with people in your own building or in your own district can get in the way of or it can be off sync then with other people, right? right. So yeah, yeah, I see that. Um, but but as you were talking, like, <laughs> sorry, um, you're, there's got to be some way for us to be able to see those collections too so that it's not just you saying, oh, you're interested in cultural connections, um, you know, here's this collection. Like, I want to be able to see that too. Um, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I totally get that you can connect next year's kids with last year's kids, mm -hmm. but being able to connect across is, is the goal, I think. Mm -hmm. for me. I, yeah. I, had an, I had an idea. Go ahead, Tommy. Yeah. I had an idea while Joe was talking also. I, I really liked her, uh, uh, the metaphor of the bread, 
And uh, but when she was when she started that, she just kept mentioning ten days, and I thought she was going in a different direction. Um, Chris was talking about it'd be nice to know um, what everybody's workflow is, um, and I was just I just had the idea that maybe if we knew, uh, for example, that everybody needs help. Um, deciphering which sources are good um, to use in research, like Joe's students and my students, uh, same thing. Um, maybe we'd be able to set up a time where we had 10 days where we we're going to have this MOOC where it was going to focus on how to find good uh, resources. And maybe we could, instead of doing a really long one, we could kind of contain it a little bit and then many different people could get in during those 10 days to kind of look at that one kind of central idea. Um, that was that while Joe was talking. I just that was kind of what was going through my head. Makes a lot of sense to me. And so you've nominated one topic that we could look at. And I, I mean, Chris Sloan, you do uh, quite a, an intensive looking at diff not only different kinds of resources, but like different ways to find resources, right? Um, yeah. Which is really interesting. So. Yeah. So, so I, I, and I always wonder how could we join that in some way, um, mm -hmm. and do it at the same time. But Don, speak up. What are you thinking around all this? I, I know you mentioned in one of your emails that you're talking to local people about getting on Youth Voices too, and so, mm -hmm. or what? Yeah. What's your workflow look like? <laughs> and does this make any sense? What was well, it, yeah. it makes a lot of sense to me. I was thinking through while everyone was talking how it would work the majority of my classes next year are freshmen so I don't start off necessarily with research with them and I don't start off just in the same place but I was thinking about a collaboration that I had with Chris this year with KQED and we mm -hmm. had sharing of what are different topics and that sort of brought people together so we had a sense of if people are doing some similar having some similar conversations so I was thinking of two things simply is one was a space where I could maybe I could look and see what different topics people are covering so that I could steer students towards certain discussions or encourage them that way but also then I, if I was looking at a list I could see okay Joe's doing this right now that kinda lines up with what I'm doing so I can line up some place to line up the workflow. I'm excited about the MOOC idea. I just I could see myself not being able to jump in on those 10 days and wanting to figure out how I could come back to it later on just based on wherever my students were at in their learning just across different grade levels. Some of those challenges was a piece I was thinking about. Yeah, I gotta say, this year, um, and it was mainly Chris and Joe's students who did it, but um, I think uh, some others did it too. But um, yeah, I mean, on a Titan pad, you listed, so you had students list topics that they were interested in. I don't know how that went, though. I mean, that that those lists became unwieldy really fast. Uh, I think. Well, actually, um, or, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was maybe unwieldy. Um, and you know there were some shenanigans every once in a while because everyone you know you can write on it. but um, um, really though what I would do is I would say to because the hangouts for Joe were during her lunchtime and for Paul it was after school but that was actually during my class when we would do hangouts so in addition to you know just the controlled chaos or just the flat out chaos of a classroom um, you know, like I would open up this computer. So what I would do is I actually, it just kind of organically went this way. Um, this one girl in one period really just liked almost being the host. And so I would say to her, why don't you look through um, this period and then um, I would find out when, um, what students of Joe's were going to be uh, on at lunch, I think. And I would say, why don't you look for points of intersection and then you call some students over the computer uh, and they can have some conversations at the same time and you know to varying degrees of success that worked I mean um, not everybody wants to participate in a hangout first of all but most of them did and really liked talking about their topic so I think the 
the most interesting parts were when kids opened up and started talking about what they were researching. Um, and then there were some similarities, you know, like we would, she would say, oh, I see a couple of health-like topics, you know, and um, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know how much more synced we could get with topics, but that structure lends itself to if people were actually doing a really similar thing, um, there would be some synergy there, I think, on, um, you know, them talking about, well, what have you found and, and that. So there were times when it seemed to connect fairly closely, but I think it worked best when the student who just kind of became the de facto host uh, of when her class connected with Joe's, um, she would just look for connections. And so to that um, extent, I think the Titan Pad was worked, you know. Go ahead, Joe. Oh, oh, go ahead. I just had a question sure. because it kind of relates to the idea of you know, in the same way that you guys are trying to connect students, we're talking about trying to generate professional learning communities amongst teachers as well. And I think one of the challenges we're trying to figure out is this past year, we tried to have different guru hangouts or conversations and, and change the topic up on a weekly basis. But I think one of the challenges that we're, what we're uh, trying to meet, that's it, similar to yours in trying to connect students, is can you have an extended conversation? Is there a way to have a topic that lasts over a, a longer period of time so it's more of an inquiry, a study into a longer you know, term period versus like one time you get together and talk about it? And, and what are the best methods for doing that? Because it seems like, I mean, as you guys seem to have this awesome you know, youth voices community where you're centered around a common idea and common practice, um, and, and I'm just sort of curious, how, how did this develop and what advice do you have for creating uh, communities of learners that last longer than, say, one hangout? Well, I don't know if I could answer that question exactly, but what I thought of after, you know, things happened with Joe and my students was if initially in the inquiry process, like, um, by the time we got together, Joe's students were well down the road of their topic and mine were pretty committed to theirs. So I, I often thought, you know, like, if in that, you know, the questioning time, that early... Um, kind of brainstorming period where, um, you know, they're looking for ideas and they're open to ideas. So if they had come across some of um, Joe's students or Don's students, um, their ideas as they were kind of in the inception phase, um, I think that would have made for stronger connections um, and continued conversations. Mm. Okay. I mean, I, I had, there's, you know, in in, in, your, in my ideal, like, Google Hangout world, of I, what I love doing with my kids was having our Hangouts. We just started having a whole bunch of Hangouts. Because it's not like I'm a Hangout junkie, but, I mean, we would just have conversations. I'm here at my house, they're there at their house, and then we would just have the conversations about the work, whether it was Shakespeare, whether it was Senior Project. It was conversations about the work. So I feel like why our students are... So adept at being able, they're seen. Well, my mine are seniors. Um, that I was hoping that we could do something where there's a scheduled, like we were doing a scheduled weekly hangout, twelve o'clock my time, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And that was, and I feel like if my kids, even though the timing is different, if my kids could have hangouts where they're actually talking about their different theses, and then they're all, they're all, all of them are social equity topics, and then when, like, Chris's students in the spring would start their research, you know, and my students were actually presenting. I mean, I don't know. I, I kind of just was had this idea that we would just be having a hangout slot or the kids would take it on themselves and do them from home because they, I just was really surprised by it. They were started running hangouts on their own. Like, I didn't, without me there, with each other. Um, can our students be able to do that as well? Because a hangout on air, I mean... It's a way that my kiddos were collecting field research, so they were doing hangouts on air with people that were their that were their experts for their for their topic. Mm -hmm. So I, why couldn't our kids do the same kind of thing? Why can't there be a hangout where everybody that's looking at potentially a topic of policing or or something like you know they jump on one together? And I don't know. I, they were really easy to do. Like, that was the thing that made it, like, that why I used it so much, was it was just, it started to get really easy. And the kids could do it from their phone. Could, 
it was that was the, what was easy about it. they got the hang of it very quickly. Can we do something like that in the fall where it is there's not going to be any one stop solution, right? So the MOOC would be good for a 10 day thing. Then if we have a whole series of hangouts going on for 21 days or something, would be cool too. Um, can I? Can, and and as I, you mentioned, I would love to have something. In as you mentioned the the particular talk, you did you, you said police violence in you or something? <laughs> I don't. I that's what I heard. Um, but but so here's here's the, so the the model of the hear me folks in Pittsburgh um, who were on a couple months ago um, is to choose a topic that's important in the community. So you know, there's in Pittsburgh, there's as in many cities, there's police violence, and they're hiring a new um, police chief um, and so we're going to collect all these podcasts from kids and we're going to play them for the mayor before he hires the police chief right so so there's like a, a, a really clear built-in audience I don't um, and they do like I think three or four of those a year um, so that might be a way I mean I don't know how to do that and hold on to our um, you know self-directed choose your own topic um, but that model rings around in my head too, as as a way to kind of get organized. So, so in other words, let me summarize that: if if we knew who the audience was for the work, that might be useful. Does that make sense? I don't know. I'm just thinking. Yeah, I mean, we're going through the same sort of idea. If we're trying to generate different uh, learning communities around, you know, different. Different ways you can use Guru, like for instance, Joe Joe has her students build collections, but maybe some teachers like making screencasts, or some teachers like, who knows what. But you guys have actually, through this conversation, inspired me to send out some sort of survey and ask the teachers, like, if you were to engage in some sort of inquiry with each other around, you know, using a Guru as a practice, which topics would you be most interested in, and then designing the the structure after that. So it's like engage interest first, and then design a structure after that. So we've talked a lot. So, yeah, thanks. I, I, I wanted to go back to Don for a second and ask, you, you said you wouldn't be starting with research. Um, I'm assuming you'd be starting with more personal writing, more identity mm -hmm. kinds of things. Do you want yes. to talk about that a little bit? Like, the, you said, it, and it's mainly ninth graders. Mm-hmm. Right, so, so you're exactly right. We start with writing, and it's personal writing and personal narrative writing, and then there, and of course, there's eventually literature surrounding that as well. So, I, so when I, when working with research and inquiry for my students would be later in the year, but that doesn't mean that there can't be connections to. A personal narrative. As everyone was talking, I was thinking about um, different ways to collaborate, and I started wondering. And this is sort of off topic of what I start with, but I was wondering if students ever write collaboratively through Youth Voices, like are composing pieces of similar topics, like I was thinking about how he was talking about the survey of topics, if students are ever doing that. And I can't say that I would start with that, but that would be an interesting interesting move um, to connect some of those the research pieces. I was just curious about that. So, so. let me just answer it technically. Um, it's, it's, it's there, but we haven't a accessed it much. And Chris, okay. I, you and I should just talk about this sometime. Like, so, so Chris's students in one of his classes did uh, several DIY projects, and it seemed to me um, that those didn't necessarily have to be um, I statements. This is what I built, and said they could have been. This is what you could build. Um, and so at that point, and then I was also messing around with uh, some social studies teachers thinking about. You know, we want kids to write things about ancient Egypt, but you know, again, why are these necessarily personal blogs? It doesn't make a lot of sense to be. So there is a wiki function on Youth Voices. It's a wiki function in that anybody can edit it. Um, that page. Um, there, 
and I don't know. I mean, there are some wiki functions that aren't available there, but that's certainly available. And it doesn't look much different than creating a discussion page. But socially, we could talk about you know what that would be to create those pages together. So there is. I was just going to answer technically, but it became social there, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, but um, I, appre I appreciate that answer. And in mm -hmm. terms of the research, I do have an upper-level class that I do, as you're talking, I reminded myself, I do research with earlier in the year. So. And I, Chris, you, you also teach a photography class or a media class. That will continue? Yeah. So, yeah, I teach photography and then media, too. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just wondering if like there could I would love to have a class <laughs> I, I don't know if I could handle this but I think I could where there are some kids who are totally interested in the photography MOOC you know and they mess with your kids and there are other kids who are doing research mm -hmm. and there are other kids who are doing something else um, but I got to bring up really fast because we're we are running out of time um, um, Don, you mentioned literature, and I breathed heavy. I don't know if you noticed. Because, th like, that's the exact moment when, like, social networking should be happening, right? The, the kids, like, they should be reading similar kinds of things and posting and then, you know. But, but it's almost impossible. Like, you're on Chapter 15, and we just started Chapter 3, and then we have an assembly, and, you know, I mean. <laughs> so, yeah. any thoughts on that? <laughs> Well, I guess I yeah. wonder about, you know, there's stuff that we read as a group, but then I want to do a little bit better at the individual, the free reading kinds of choices. And, um, you know, one of my English class is an AP English language class, so, you know, like I have kind of the, the usual suspects from this list of whatever, whoever said, you know, these are 100 books everybody should read or something like that. Um, you know... There's some good books on there, and I think if other people chose those books and just said, you know, like, I'm going to chip away at it, um, it gets away from, like, my classes on Chapter 15. It's more individual. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know, like, a common list of just kind of the usual suspects kind of books and have kids read from it as they go. Um, it kind of could foster a little kind of book club things or... I, I would I would love to jump on that one, Chris. Okay. I would because I have I have the AP Lit kiddos. I'm, if we could have, if we're thinking Lit circles or something, some such. Sure. We could have a solid group of say five they choose from. Then I don't know. I mean, I feel like we could do that. Yeah, and then you know, like through the course of a whole quarter, let's say, just yeah. say like you know, be done with it by then, instead of trying to structure too much. Right. I, I, um, lit, lit circles and hangouts go together too, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, my, my, my son's freshman teacher, they are, they're, they're blogging and they have little book circles and they only blog with each other. I mean, they're only posting to each other, which is really cute. At the ninth grade level, I'm like, my God, these kids are talking to each other outside of the classroom around the same book. And it's an awesome book. Like, the, 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 the quality of the text is amazing. But the depth of the writing is different, right? Each kid is taking something from that book. That's just different. How cool would that be, though? You know, if I could partner with, and it was a set set of, a set of texts, and then at the end of it, everybody did created a Guru collection about, or something where you know there was this final project and ongoing. We were posting back and forth to each other, and it's concentrated. Our 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 terms are six week marking periods. I could we experiment for a, a marking period or such, you know. So six weeks. That. Six weeks is a nice, uh, yeah, a nice <laughs> move time. <laughs> I mean, it, so imagining mini MOOCs, um, I think, mm -hmm. is is what we've convinced each other of. But so we are kind of up at the top of the hour here, and and wanna um, wanna. I, so what I'd like to ask you to do is, what could you commit to kind of helping this community? Because there is, you know, there are a lot of other teachers, and be thinking about other teachers, um, maybe this summer, helping to make happen. <laughs> Is that, or, mm -hmm. uh, is that fair? <laughs> mm -hmm. Chris, do you want to lead that off? Sure. Um, I could uh, help, um, and I think Joe and I were just talking about it. I wouldn't mind mm -hmm. coming up with a few books that, and, and I think um, 
Joe, your students are still doing civic engagement kinds of writing? Oh my God. We're, yeah, we're, it's all about that this year. Okay. For all so, of the but, yeah, Joe, you know, never apologize for that because even though, sorry, Chris, but even though, I maybe mean, you're going to say the same thing, even though some of us don't have that in our district, when we see your kids doing that, we're like, of course we can do that too, you know? So, yeah. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, so I think we could probably come up with a little book list um, of books that your students aren't already reading as part of the curriculum that speak to civic engagement. I think we could come up with a little six week kind of. Uh, lit circles strategy, or not even about civic engagement because I do have I have these kids double block. I have them okay. like four hours a day. Okay. So I'm saying for my AP Lit class, than civic engagement, we could do something big like you know. sure, yeah. Don, you have any thoughts? Where are you? Uh, um. I have so many, I'm not sure where to focus them. Uh, are there... I would be interested... I'm interested in, in all the conversations. Um, I I don't... I honestly, I don't know where to start. I know I should come up with something. But. You don't have to. It's fine. Okay. Cool. I mean, I, the... the one of the questions, uh, one of the big differences over the years has been that Chris Sloan's kids barely do profiles. And my kids, I use those profile pages, which is okay. You know, I just want to say. And, and I use those profile pages as a place to learn HTML, a place to, but also a place to get, per, get um, identity stuff out there, right? Um, so, anyway, just to say, I, I would be I'd be interested to kind of make clear my thinking around why to do a profile and how to use a profile and how to how to use WebMaker for example in building a profile. Um, so just to say that that's and I think that all it attaches to personal narrative writing and, and identity stuff. Um, yes, what's, what's I, WebMaker? I would, very I, 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 um, <laughs> the Mozilla stuff. I did oh. say the rest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, popcorn and okay. <laughs> Got it. That's the other one. Yeah. Webmaker is the right thing. To think. Anyway, so um, Joe, and then we'll let Guru finish. <laughs> um, Don, I w if you're cool with it, and your kids start the year off with the narrative writing, I would, I would, you know, I have several students that always have no idea what angle or where they want to go with a research topic. They I bet you reading that a lot of reading the ninth grade personal narratives would be one way that they could start kind of getting juiced about a certain idea they might see in that. So please feel free to call on us to like comment or my kids need inspiration and the the younger ones will inspire them. Um, and yeah, with with Guru, I feel like Guru is going to serve a purpose for me at the beginning of units, the middle of units, the end of units. And that's kind of what I'm figuring out. I'm figuring out the when is it the best time to use part, but there, it's always a good time to use it. It's just, um, and I really do want to experiment more with the students doing it. And then I, I guess I'm just really excited. I feel like I got through a lot of kinks this year with all this stuff. So I have all these partners now that, yeah, I don't know where it's going to go. It would be awesome. I'm sorry to add this, but I'm going to. Um, one, one, one of the things I also want to, we're keep working on, because Joe, I I didn't feel like I was like way busy. I don't even remember why. That like the day you did presentations and all that, and so that I missed that totally. So oh, it's yeah. like I know I it's following these kids all year, and then like their presentations I missed, right? So and and with Chris, your your kids figured out how to put their final papers up as white papers, but then mm -hmm. I'm not sure there was much interaction around them again. So right. I think like the. We need to also look. We're, we're really good at the middle, <laughs> um, but connecting at the beginning, at the end, at the end would be interesting to think about. Mm -hmm. so, just saying. Hi guys, <laughs> Drew and Aaron. What are you? What are you thinking about? Yeah. So I mean, as I mentioned before, I mean we interact and interface with you know several school districts and basically have access to you know a very large 
amount of teachers. And so I think getting them involved in conversations like these is, is one way we can contribute. I mean, even directing them towards, you know, youth voices through Guru, if that's something uh, you're interested in. And then also creating uh, basically a, a more collaborative environment. You know, we talk about Joe's students being able to make collections to share with her next class. But the idea is Guru should also serve as a function to be able to share their work with students beyond Oakland, right? So I think it's, it's we need to highlight those channels because they currently exist um, to act, allow students to collaborate beyond just their most immediate peers. Yeah, I agree. And I think something that I'm really trying to work on this summer is trying to really uh, redefine these library spaces and not even redefine, but just expand the definition of them because I fought for a really long time to get these kind of central locations for one organization to have this space, and now I have it, so I really want to uh, figure out the best ways that we can feature partner content and not only just show these playlists, but also to make it, like you're talking about, and like you're all talking about, a great uh, space for community collaboration from a network um, in addition to just a place to showcase content. Cool. Well, thank you um, for coming and <laughs> partnering with us here. Um, and Joe, did your daughter want to say hi? Or <laughs> no, she was... wanted to tell me she was hungry. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> so she went so, to so go, go, go feed, feed her, her, man. What are you doing? <laughs> thank you, Joe, for your time, and and oh, Don and and Chris and Drew and, and Aaron and uh, Tommy, who had to go just a little bit early. Um, we're here every Wednesday night. Um, and uh, Chris, when are you going to Ireland? Uh, I leave in two weeks. Okay, so and we're going to be about five weeks, and then um, I sent you something earlier. July sixteenth, we're going to do a live show from the Maker Space there. Cool. Or and I don't know if it's live. I don't know. <laughs> It'll be live. Yes. It will be live. Yes. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So uh, talk to you soon. Um, we've uh, this is show three ninety nine, so we got four hundred coming up next week. But um, and we've been doing this a while, and um, at edtechtalk.com, which is a channel of the world for the world. I guess we can keep that. That's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, Dave Corbier, we always mention Dave Corbier, and Jeff Lebo, who started that community. Thank you all. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you all. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.